everyone. I am going to show you how to make some birds, some stylized birds, inspired by the art of James Rizzi. Um, he was really known for putting birds in his artwork, for starters, um, but he was also really known for using really bright colors, really thick black outlines, and then adding really detailed kind of patterns in his backgrounds. So when we do this today, um, we're going to be working on half a sheet of paper. Um, I'm using cardstock, which is a little bit thicker, but copy paper is fine, but you, you just want it to be blank. Now, as far as getting half of it, um, if you do what I call the hot dog fold, and you kind of line it up, match your corners, and then crease it here, you can cut right on that line there to make your two sheets. Um, so you just got to go nice and slow and stay on the line when you're doing your cutting. Um, if you have something else that can cut your paper in half for you, that's fine. Um, if you don't have scissors, you can just fold the paper and leave it folded while you draw. That's fine too. So that's how we get to half a paper. Now, as far as doing the drawing here, um, there are eight steps to making your drawing. Now, I like to draw in a Sharpie. Um, that's my personal favorite just because then it doesn't move at all when I'm coloring. Um, but any sort of black marker is fine. So if you're gonna use like a black regular marker, that's fine. If you need to draw on pencil, that's fine too. You can do that. Um, I find that pencil is a little bit harder to see when I do my coloring. So I do prefer the black lines since that's kind of part of James Rizzi's style. Now, when you get started, you're gonna make a series of bird bodies first. Um, and there's some shapes here that you can use as examples. And try not to make them too small because then you won't have room for the eyes and the wings and things like that. So I'm going to do, I think I usually fit about four in. If you make them a little smaller, you can probably get five in. Um, you'll, that's just kind of up to you. But you're using pretty basic shapes. Um, and then I'm going to do, I call that the gumdrop shape. That's a, sort of a semicircle, semi-oval. All right, so now that I have those four bird bodies in there, I'm gonna add the legs on next. And there's a whole bunch of legs here you can choose from. Um, you want them to go all the way to the bottom. So um, sometimes it helps us actually start with the feet first and make the feet shape. So these are actually like sideways hearts. And then connect them to the body with a line or two lines so that you don't accidentally not leave enough room for the feet. So that one's like a semicircle. So I do that on the bottom and then two lines up like that. And that one I think has toes. So I do some lines for the toes there. Um, I could do one here. That one is just kind of like, like a V, sideways V with a line in the middle. Um, and then for the last one, um, I'll just do the straight ones. So that's kind of like a mountain with a line in the middle and then a line up. All right, so now I've got my, my legs, so then I move on to the wings, and there's some different styles of wings. If you want all your birds to look exactly the same, because James Rizzi does do that in some of his art, you totally can. So if you just want to use the same wing the whole time, because that's the one you know how to make, that's fine. Um, if you want to mix them up and do different wings, that's great too. Um, if it's a wing that is a shape, like a, a closed shape, then you can choose to color a different color. Um, on the other ones, you might just color the wing as part of the body, so that's up to you. Um, so each one's getting a wing, and then the next step is the topper, like the feathers on the top of the bird's head. So there's some different styles there again. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do that one, and then this one, it's kind of like two lines that come up and then sort of a loopy thing on the top. It reminds me of like a golf club. And then in the last one, um, I'm gonna do it like that. Okay, after I do the topper, then I add a tail on. And you'll notice these three things kind of are the same. They're just different directions. Um, so if you wanted, you can make the tail and the wing kind of look the same, um, or you can make them totally different. So that is up to you. A swirly tail, a bumpy, that's kind of like a bumpy line, and then um, a line with the circle. All right, now that I have the tails on, I'm going to add the beaks. 
And again, there's a bunch of different beaks to choose from. You can do the same beak more than once. That's up to you. Make this one really long. And then, there we go. All right, so there's my beaks. Now they're starting to finally look like birds. And then I'm gonna add the eyes on. Um, you're really only looking at one eye because these birds are sideways, so you're looking at the profile of them. Um, so think about that when you're doing your eyes. I like to make them extra big, kind of, we call that exaggeration. So that's something you can definitely do. Um, there's a really big eye. And then my last one. All right, so now I've got the eyes. So the parts of the birds are done. So now I need to think about fun patterns for the background. So there's a bunch of examples here. I can do clouds, I can do loopy lines, swirlies, circles, kind of like a snowflake line. You can do a raindrop, I didn't put that in there, but you could do that. Um, you can also add some things on the bottom. I would start with those bottom things first before you start adding in kind of like those sky parts. So you could add things like a flower. Um, you could do like, grass or like something that's like a little bushy plant growing there you can do things like that along the bottom um, you can also then add things that are sky like so you could put a sun in your picture or a moon um, that sun and the moon is probably not something I would repeat as much as maybe the clouds per se it would be a little bit unusual to have a whole bunch of suns in there but definitely when you add some of these other things, you want to think about adding them multiple times to make sort of a pattern and not just add it once. All right, so there's a bunch of clouds and then I'm going to add in some kind of windy, wavy looking lines. Now, once you've got your background filled with some pattern, then you want to think about color. So as far as color goes, obviously try to do your very best coloring, three star coloring. Um, you can make the birds each a different color um, or multiple colors, or maybe all your birds are exactly the same. You'll have to decide what works for you. And then once you've colored the birds, then you can kind of go in and color your background. And you can choose any color for that. I mean, I did like a light blue sky, which is kind of a typical sky, but I could also say that I want my sky to be red. Um, what I would try to avoid is using whatever color you use in the background on the birds because then you won't see the birds anymore. So if I decide to do a red sky in this one, then I don't want my birds to be red too. I want to use other colors for my birds. So just think about that when you're coloring and I hope you have fun. Enjoy making your birds.